Let's get a crack it. Let's start a session. Mars lift the competition. Balls by that action. You can never debate it. This is actual fact. Even they and Max Gale said they say it's a rap. I'm like, say what? Say what? What's up with all my haters? My ball when I perform. So my jerseys in the air. I'm allergic to my haters. Every morning I put player. Let the clothes I can wear. Just like them Oregon players. Yeah, quack, quack. What it do? Rap like it's nothing to it. Matter of fact, you can ask hard and I'm cooking too. Face dog cooking too. Mm -mm. Nah, look at you. Break mine. They embrace mine. Like a cooking too. Four takes. That's you. Three takes. Not me. Two takes if you lucky. First take. Stop me. Four takes. That's you. Three takes. Not me. Two takes if you lucky. This is first take. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We have a lot to get into, correct, Max oh, Kellerman? A lot of it. Not all of it's good. Mm-hmm. Stephen A. is in NYC. How we doing today? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Let's get it on. We're good. Let's get it on. We ready to work? Here we go. Always. Folks in the Bay Area are still holding their collective breath after their prize acquisition. Kevin Durant hyperextended his left knee in his hometown. We do have an update for you. That's coming up. Teammate Jaja Pachulia was tossed backward and landed on Durant's left leg. Katie stayed in for a few more possessions before limping off toward the locker room for good when Golden State called a timeout. Now, Durant underwent an MRI. Golden State will reveal those results a little later today. We'll give you those as soon as we have them. But meanwhile, Matt Barnes' name has been trending all morning on Twitter. Barnes confirmed to ESPN that the Warriors have lined him up as a potential Durant filler. Here's his coach and teammate on that injury. I'm always concerned about um, any injury because you never know um, how bad it's going to be. So we'll, we'll just wait and see and keep our fingers crossed. You're never comfortable when uh, when you lose somebody uh, who's one of the best players in the league. We're obviously concerned. You know, anytime a guy goes down, especially when you're talking knees, um, you know, it's, it's a concern. But, you know, nonetheless, we still got to figure everything out, you know, why he's not out there, but, you know, hopefully he's okay. We're not going to act like he died, you know, we don't even know what happened. You know, you know what's going on? Like, you got to know something before you can kind of go along those lines. You know, we really don't know much right now. Leave it to Draymond to bring a little levity to the situation, but we do know something now. This just in, a source close to Durant telling our Jeff Goodman that he will be back for the playoffs. So, Stephen A., with that, I ask you this question. If Durant is less than 100%, do the Warriors still win the West? Um, no, I'm not so sure about that. That's number one. And before I get into anything else, um, I reported on Sports Center about a half hour ago. Uh, the Warriors are going to uh, release some information within the next couple of minutes uh, talking about how Durant is expected to be back for the playoffs. I reported that about a half hour ago. But I'm also hearing from other sources that they may be keeping information from folks. There's some real, real concerns as to whether or not Kevin Durant's season is done. I'm not sure what's going on right now, but I can tell you Warriors sources have told me that even though he's expected to be out for the rest of the regular season, he will be back for the playoffs. That is their position. Others outside of the organization, but connected in NBA circles, swear they're hearing something entirely different, that Durant may end up being done. I don't know what to tell you. We'll go with what the Warriors are saying. Having said all of that, when I look at the Warriors right now, let's not underestimate the San Antonio Spurs or the Houston Rockets. Certainly, Kevin Durant being gone is a devastating blow, but they're still a legitimate team. And the acquisition of Matt Barnes with his mental toughness, with his tenacity, with his fearlessness, because he's not scared of anybody. As far as I'm concerned, that's a welcomed addition to any bona fide playoff roster. But I can't ignore what I'm seeing from the uh, San Antonio Spurs and the Houston Rockets. In the case of the San Antonio Spurs, Max, we're looking at a team with Kawhi Leonard, who is a league MVP candidate, the acquisition of Paul Gasol in concert with LaMarcus Aldridge gives them size on the front line. And then you have a guy in Greg Popovich who recognizes his team is slower, but they're very experienced. And if anybody could dictate pace, they can. As a matter of fact, at some point in time, Max, you and I may need to get into a discussion whether or not LeBron James and those boys are happy KD is hurt. Because basically, if the KD is hurt and can't go, if the San Antonio Spurs are the team that LeBron James has to face, I'm not sure he'd look forward to that. In the case of the Houston the Rockets, you got a guy in James Harden that told me during Super Bowl week that the ball is in my hands. I'm going to get dudes in foul trouble. More importantly, I'm not going to be the timid soul who came off the bench for the Oklahoma City Thunder five years ago when we lost in the finals to the Miami Heat. I'm going to be far, far more aggressive than I've ever been in the past. This is my team. I'm the leader. I know what is required of me, and I'm going to show up and deliver. So his ability to get dudes in foul trouble, to get to the free throw line at will, to get guys sent to the bench, and to have marksmen around him, along with the acquisition of Lou Williams, makes Houston formidable. So my answer is very, very simple, Max. I'm not going to sit 
sit up there and say that Golden State is not the favorites, but could they get knocked off without the services of Kevin Durant? Mm -hmm. I think the odds of that happen have increased exponentially. And Stephen A., we do have some new news um, breaking across wires right now that could potentially change your position here. Kevin Durant, this is straight from the Warriors, has um, a grade 2 MCL sprain, a tibial bone bruise, and from what we know right now, he'll be out of action indefinitely. He will be reevaluated in four weeks, and there is no timetable for his return as of right now. So again, that's a grade 2 MCL sprain and a tibial bone bruise out indefinitely reevaluated in a without, month. If that's Kevin what, Durant what is gone, me. the Warriors will not win a championship. That's not going to happen without Durant. But let's take the case that Stephen A. just responded to. Let's say he gets back by the playoffs, and he's something less than 100%. He's 80%. Not only do I think that even without Durant for the rest of the season, the Warriors are likely to win the West to be the number one seed, I also think that, let's say, 80% of Durant, the Warriors get out of the West once the playoffs roll around. Now, obviously, their odds of succeeding have decreased without Durant, of course. He lost the second best player in the league, most likely, right behind LeBron James. But they are four games better than the Spurs right now, eight and a half games better than the Rockets. The Warriors have 22 games to play. Do I think without Durant, let's say the addition of Harrison Barnes, and I agree with you, Stephen A., that mental toughness and the, and the kind of good teammate that he is may be exactly what the Warriors need, a, li a little bit more of that. But the point is, I don't think the Spurs are four games better than the Warriors taking Durant off the Warriors over a 22-game period. And I certainly don't think the Rockets are eight and a half games better. And why do I say that? Well, yesterday, we had a good little uh, litmus test, or, or, or a, a good little uh, um, um, indicator. They go across country. They're in the, they just began a cross-country road trip. They play a bunch of games in, in not that many days. They were playing the second of back-to-back -back on the road across the country. Steph came into the game ice cold and remained cold throughout most of that game. They played essentially without Durant, and they played one of the best teams in the East. Obviously, that team was at home, and they've been hot. And what happened? The Wizards were lucky to come away with a win by the skin of their teeth. And what does that highlight about the Warriors? Even, you know, you don't have Durant now, you also don't have Bogut or Barnes. What it highlights is a lot of the praise that the, that the Spurs get for being coached up so well, for being this machine. The Warriors deserve that, too. With Kevin Durant, they're basically the Spurs with more talented personnel. Without Kevin Durant, they're kind of the Spurs. They know exactly how to run what they run. They've been doing it now for, men, for several years. They've had a lot of success with it. And again, you know, I bring up the second of back-to-back cross-country road trips, Stephen A., because what's the safest bet in sports? NBA, second of back-to-back, -back, on the road, especially across the country, that team's likely to lose, particularly when they're playing a good team. Take the best player off that team, and they barely lose. The Warriors are really, really good. I think good enough to withstand the surge that's coming from the Spurs and the Rockets if they don't have Durant. And once the playoffs roll around, you add Durant, even most of Durant, to that mix, they're going to get out of the West, provided Durant comes back for the playoffs. Well, the bottom line is I think you're wrong. And the reason why I think you're wrong is because you're acting like they're the Spurs without Kevin Durant. They're not the Spurs without Kevin Durant because the, at the omission of Andrew Bogut and Harrison Barnes they haven't had to, they've, they've had to deal with each other because they've had Kevin Durant. So you replace those two with the second best player in the world, that's one thing. But to lose that second best player in the world, now the absence of him after you've been playing with him this long, combined with the absence of Harrison Barnes and Andrew Bogut, really, really hurts you, particularly against the Spurs, because if nothing else, both Barnes and Bogut were formidable defensively. Suddenly, without the rim protector in a bogey, without a defensive guy like Harrison Barnes to sort of help you out, that puts more pressure on Iguodala because now he's got to log more minutes. The Sean Livingston's of the world, these are people that have been on your squad, true, but they played different roles. And not only that, you had more depth, so they were able to do more because they wouldn't have to expend with so much energy because they knew they had the depth. But now you don't have, you got to remember, if you're thinking about life without Kevin Durant, it has to be without Kevin Durant, Bogut and Barnes, the three of them. That's not the same team. Well, That's except not that we're talking about Spurs. two different things. What I'm saying is I agree with you. Without Durant, you take him off the team entirely, Spurs are better. The Rockets might be, too, with the addition of Lou Williams, because they can score, too. But there are two separate issues here. One, the rest of the regular season, who gets the number one seed? What I'm saying is with 22 games for the Warriors left to play, the Spurs have a couple more than that. If the, if the Warriors go, let's say, 16-6 and six without Durant, the Spurs would have to go 20-2 and two just to tie them for, their, for the best record. So I think it's more likely than not that the Warriors just hold off the Spurs because there isn't that much more time to make up those four games. Then once the playoffs start, we're assuming at this moment that Durant comes back 
and he's most of what he is normally, but maybe not all. In no. that case, we're not we're no longer talking about the Warriors without Durant. We're talking about the Warriors with some version of Durant, and they've been better than everybody all season like that. Well, well, I, I think this is a bit presumptuous, and maybe it's not your fault, but I would tell you right now, I can't assume that Durant's going to be there. Well, that's another I'm story, you right of course. Now. I, I, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you right now. So I, I, I'm only addressing your point, thinking about the absence of Durant combined with the absence of Bogut and Barnes combined with Bogut being in Cleveland. So not only is he no longer for you there at Golden State, but now he's playing for the nemesis, which is right. the Cleveland Cavaliers. So he's able not only to be a rim protector, but he buffers and elevates the stature of Tristan Thompson, who now has uh, has somebody to suffer to, 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 you know, to, to spell for him. And then take this into account, Max Kellerman, and even though we were talking about the Western Conference, let's just veer to the finals for a second here. How did Cleveland win the championship? It just wasn't because of the greatness of LeBron and Kyrie. It was also because they dictated place because they got more physical. Okay. Well, can you imagine this? Bogut in the middle, just for at least some minutes. Bogut in the middle, Tristan Thompson as your power forward, LeBron as your small forward. Could you imagine how yep. you have the potential to be? And the reason why I throw that out there is because we actually saw Tristan Thompson out at the three-point line defending Steph Curry and Klay Thompson at times on the perimeter yeah, so he a, can move his feet and defend Steph and Curry. Now, and, and, a, a compromise. Right. I mean, Steph Curry couldn't get separation from like Stephen Adams in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, but the compromise but the compromise Steph Curry is not a compromise Kevin Durant. Well, okay, look. You see what I'm saying? Okay, now, now we're, we're on to the next thing. Let's talk about the Cavs in the finals. You know, I suppose, how do you like that matchup? Are they actually favorites now, the Cavs, given the Durant injury or just given their pickups? I would say this. First, when Stephen A. Smith says, well, I don't know if we can just assume that Durant will be back even for the playoffs. I know we've talked to a lot of people. Some things you can, some things you cannot report. That makes me very nervous about the future of this season. You should be very Kevin nervous Durant. about Durant. In that you should case, be very nervous about Durant. Without yes. Durant, I believe the Spurs get out of the West most likely. Okay, that's one. Two, let's just assume for a second that Durant can come back as some semblance of himself. Do these mm -hmm. Cavs, should they now be considered the favorites because of what you just brought up? Because of the acquisition, oh, right. not only of Andrew Bogut, but also of Darren right. Williams, who's an excellent oh. pick-and-roll point guard in the league that, that where that's re really very important. And, by the way, Derek Williams, who, who has a lot of value off of that. And getting J.R. Smith potentially. And J.R. Well, Smith's coming back. Um, um, I'm here to tell you right now, let me put this on front street right here. Even if Kevin Durant is healthy, the Cleveland Cavaliers right now are my favorites to win the championship. With Bogut, with Darren Williams, with Derek Williams, with the return of J.R. Smith being imminent, with the acquisition of Kyle Korver, with the uh, return of Kevin Love expected to take place, there are no excuses for LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. So as far as I'm concerned, even with the four-headed monster that is the Golden State Warriors, because of what has transpired over the last three days with these two pickups in Bogut and Darren Williams, the Cleveland Cavaliers are officially my favorite to win the NBA championship, whether Kevin Durant is 100 percent or not. I understand why you say that. I disagree. Now, I, it seems silly to argue this at this moment because it seems unlikely to me that even if Durant gets back, he will be 100 percent by the finals if and when yep, the, the Golden State true. Warriors make it. But let's just take hypothetically that Durant never got hurt or that he comes back at 100 percent by the time the finals roll around and the Warriors make it. I understand why you would take the Cavs because... You know, what are the Warriors susceptible to in the absence of Bogut, a, a team that rebounds really well, a team that can post? And you just mentioned, you know, we talked about Darren Williams. They needed a point guard off the bench. He's a lot better than Della Vidova to do what they need him to do off the bench. Spell Kyrie and LeBron as the primary ball handler, run the pick and roll. I mentioned Derek Williams. Bogut gives you, obviously, a huge rebounding advantage with Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love and LeBron James against a team that can struggle there at times in the Golden State Warriors. But Golden State, defensively, is susceptible to a team that can post up. And, and the, in the absence of Andrew Bogut. And what I'm saying is the presence of Andrew Bogut on the Cavs is not the best way to exploit the absence of Andrew Bogut on the Golden State Warriors. In other words, he is offensively not nearly what he is defensively. And so though I, though I understand now he pops up on the rival team and you think it highlights the absence on the Warriors, in fact, he offensively is probably not the best way to exploit the absence of him defensively on the Warriors. Yeah, but my retort to that would be Golden State's bench 
is what ultimately carried them to a level of success. Now, granted, they lost to Cleveland, and we understand that the health of Steph Curry, the suspension of Draymond Green, ultimately injuries to Bogut, who was out the last two games, and Andre Iguodala, who was hobbled the last two games, definitely spelled doom for them. But the but but the the, the thing that the ingredients to the Warriors' success over the last couple of years has been their depth, not just their perimeter mm. shooting, not just their stars, but their depth. Cleveland, they had questionable depth and still managed to get to two finals and win a chip. This year, they now have depth. So you're talking about LeBron and Kyrie. Not only do you have the shooters around you, but now you've gotten depth for Tristan Thompson. The combination of all of those things with the acquisition of Derek Williams, who is active, who I think is going to be just as vital to this team as I perceive Matt Barnes as being right. to the Golden Anymore. State Warriors. I think it's one of those situations where if, if I've if I got to look at depth, I'm going to say even. If I have to look at physicality, I'm going to say Cleveland. If I have to think about playoff basketball and how physical play is relatively allowed, particularly particularly as the, the championship rounds rain, wane. Why, Max? Because referees, as, as it gets deeper, nobody wants to take the outcome away from the players. That's right. They want to let you play. And if they let you play, then they're going to allow Cleveland to sort of impose their physical will. And Golden State's answer is going to have to be perimeter play. And, you live by the and how are you going to do that? They, they better That's be what I'm saying. In that case. Look, and the best players on Cleveland, by far. LeBron's a lot better. I know we, we can argue. LeBron is so much better than Durant, Steph, and everyone else. He's in a category by himself. And Cleveland has him on top of that. Ahead. But I'll say this. Here's, here's my big takeaway from all of this that we just discussed. There was an arms race. Golden State way up the ante with Kevin Durant. Cleveland has been addressing Kevin Durant all season, and they are fully loaded. And all of a sudden, you take away Kevin Durant. It's like an arms race between two countries, and one suddenly demilitarizing. I mean, yes, at this moment, given what we know about Kevin Durant, Cleveland has to be considered the prohibitive favorite. You could argue he they have the best combat. roster top to bottom, Cleveland. Right. We'll leave it so on. you agree with me well, when you say that Cleveland out, is the prohibitive favorite? If Durant's out, if this new no, information no, no. is right. He's saying even, even no, without. No, if the Durant, I'm saying even with Kevin Durant. No, if Durant, Durant comes asking. back for the playoffs, I still like Golden State. Are they your favorite? Yes. If okay. Durant comes back, back for the playoffs. But when you get but up I, here and I start understand. talking about his health, it makes me nervous. No, 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 I understand. I, I, I'm saying to you, Max, I can see. You're saying if he's out, yeah, no. Right. If he's yeah. in, yes. yes. I got it. And as of right I now, the Warriors aren't giving us a timetable. Durant saying he will play, but we'll have an update on that in four weeks. Rivas Island is back on the market, but will anybody scoop him? We will discuss that. And speaking of available players, Adrian Peterson is free to go anywhere. But trust me, you will not believe which team wants to sign him. Unbelievable. That's next. Let's get it cracking. Let's start the session. Mars let the competition ball start that action. You can never debate it. This is actual fact. Even they have max scales. Say they say it's a rap. Like, say what? Say what? What's up with all my haters? I'm a ball when I perform. So my jersey's in the air. I'm allergic to my haters. Every morning I put player. Let the clothes I can wear just like them Oregon players. Yeah, quack, quack. What it do? Rap like it's nothing to it. Matter of fact, you can ask hard and I'm cooking too. Face dog cooking too. Mm -hmm. Nah, look at you. Great mind. They embrace mine like a cooking too. For taste. That's you. Free taste. Not me. Two takes if you lucky. First take. Stop me. Four takes. That's you. Three takes. Not me. Two takes if you lucky. This is First Take. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We have a lot to get into, correct, Max oh, Kellerman? A lot of it. Not all of it's good. Mm -hmm. Stephen A. is in NYC. How we doing today? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Let's get it on. We're good. Let's get it on. We ready to work? Here we go. Oh, Folks in the Bay Area are still holding their collective breath after their prize acquisition. Kevin Durant hyperextended his left knee in his hometown. We do have an update for you. That's coming up. Teammate Jaja Pachulia was tossed backward and landed on Durant's left leg. Katie stayed in for a few more possessions before limping off toward the locker room for good when Golden State called a timeout. Now, Durant underwent an MRI. Golden State will reveal those results a little later today. We'll give you those as soon as we have them. But meanwhile, Matt Barnes' name has been trending all morning on Twitter. Barnes confirmed to ESPN that the Warriors have lined him up as a potential Durant filler. Here's his coach and teammate on that injury. I'm always concerned about um, any injury because you never know um, how bad it's going to be. So we'll, we'll just wait and see and keep our fingers crossed. You're never comfortable when uh, when 